Hey everybody, Daniel Kelly here with View School. I want to take a look at this blog post from Evan Yu announcing View 3.5. This is the latest minor version of View that has come out September 1st, 2024. Uh, it is codenamed here Tengen Topagurin Lagen, I guess. Um, <laughs> I'm not so much up on my, uh, my anime. That's my best uh, attempt. But let's see what Tengen Tapa Guren Lagen has to offer. So the very first new feature add here in View 3.5 is reactivity system optimizations. Essentially, we have yet more performance improvements in View 3.5, right? Especially when it comes to um, deeply reactive arrays, making operations with these very deep arrays up to 10 times faster in some cases, which is really cool. Another feature here that you might have already experimented with um, even prior to the release of View 3.5 is reactive props destructure. This is because it was released as an experimental feature before, but now it is stable in 3.5. What is React props destructure? Well, essentially before, uh, you would have to uh, get your props in a variable called called props, and then you would have to reference that throughout your code as props.whatever, unless you used two refs. And then you had to use this funky with defaults function in order to provide defaults with the TypeScript syntax for defining your, your props. Now, though, with the reactive props destructure, what you get is this beautiful syntax right here. Now we don't have the extra with defaults function, we just provide defaults uh, this way by providing a default value and then you can actually destructure out the individual props and work with them throughout your component instead of doing props dot everywhere. Okay, so now there are some little caveats to this because this is a compile time feature. Um, essentially what that means is these deconstructed props here uh, actually, they, they ultimately do compile down to props.count and props.message. So therefore, uh, you should not watch these props directly. Instead, you should pass them as getters. And if you imagine this count here being replaced with props.count, this makes total sense. All right, and then your composables should also get that getter as well. And at this point, you should really just be um, familiar with defining your composables with two value in order to take this kind of really flexible reactive data, right? If you aren't familiar with how to do that, we do have a course over on the View School platform that I've linked to in the notes below about creating composables. And it will show you how to do, how to create composables that take in content just like this, take in data just like this. Okay, awesome. Uh, one last thing about this new feature is that it has great support inside of the latest version of um, View Language Tools for Visual Studio Code. Awesome. Okay, what's next? Well, View 3.5 also brings a lot of SSR improvements. That is improvements to how View renders on the server side. Well, the first feature that has to do with SSR is support for lazy hydration. Take a look at this code snippet. If we were to call define async component, pass it a loader here, and then get the component out of it, we could use that component anywhere inside of um, our, our current parent component, right? And traditionally, the define async component was used to say, hey, there's a v if on this async component somewhere inside of the template. And only when that component is truthy, or when that v if is truthy, do we want to actually load this um, th this component's JavaScript code, right? Now, though, it doesn't come down to just a V if. We could actually display the contents, the HTML, of this component on the server side. However, we don't load the actual JavaScript to hydrate the component until this piece um, is, it, it, until this piece happens based on whatever we pass it here. So in this case, we're going to show a sync component somewhere down inside the template. It's going to be rendered on the server, but we're only going to send the JavaScript related to that component to the browser. 
when that HTML is actually visible on the page. How cool is that? And we're able to get a lot more control over when we hydrate with more than just hydrate on visible. If you come over here to the, um, the GitHub pull request, you can see here that we also have hydrate on idle. In other words, when your browser is not busy doing other, you know, running other things, other JavaScript code, um, you can also hydrate on uh, media query. So only send the JavaScript down for that component at a certain width or even height of the browser. You can also hydrate on interaction, things like clicks or mouse over or wheel, or even provide your own custom strategy, meaning you have complete control over when that JavaScript is sent to the browser. You can show them HTML immediately. You can get a great first page paint. And then later on, you can make the, the element interactive when it suits your app to do so. Okay, another very useful SSR composable that they've added is use ID. Use ID allows you to get a automatically generated ID that's the same on both the client and the server. A lot of times in the past when you were generating random IDs, you'd have issue getting that same ID, um, you know, in the client that you actually created on the server. Now it's as simple as a single composable call. All right. This is guaranteed to be the exact same randomly generated ID on the server side as on the client side. This is great for a lot of different things. The use case they chose to use here in the, the blog post was for um, connecting a label with a with an input, right? Um, a lot of times we don't really care what the ID is for that input. We just want to connect them in some way with the for and the ID attributes. So this is a really great use case for that. Another feature I'm actually really excited about is because sometimes there's just no way of getting around data that is going to be different on the client than the server. It's just going to happen. Things like um, things like timestamps where you want to actually display the, the, the time string according to the locale that the, the user exists in. So in this case, now all we have to do is add the data allow mismatch attribute and you won't have the console complaining at you that something has been um, hydrated with a mismatch. We also have some custom element improvements in 3.5. To be honest, I use Vue as Vue and don't get a whole lot into actual, um, you know, native custom uh, elements for the browser. So I'm not totally sure what all this is actually doing. <laughs> Forgive my ignorance, but if anybody has any information on these defined custom elements uh, APIs that they'd like to share, definitely throw that in the comments. Would love to hear it. Finally, some closing notable features one I really like is this new use template ref composable. This allows you to define template refs with the use template ref composable, line that up with a ref inside of your template, and then the result of this use template ref is that actual DOM element in the template. Prior to 3.5, use template ref here was just the normal ref function. It was a little unintuitive and harder to explain to new people but it also meant that you had to pass template refs into composables. You couldn't define those template refs inside of composables. So, but now with use template ref, you can define the actual template ref inside of, of your composables, which is great. Even better, I think, is the support that this brings for TypeScript. Look at this. Just because we've called use template ref right here and attached it to this input, our our view language tools automatically know that this is an input HTML attribute. That's very cool. We don't have to provide any hints ourselves to TypeScript. It just knows. I love that. Okay, we also have the deferred teleport uh, feature. This allows you to provide a target for teleport that doesn't actually exist in the DOM at the time the teleport element is, uh, the teleport is, is mounted. So this only mounts after the current render cycle, essentially meaning, hey, uh, if we want to teleport something to a, an element that doesn't quite exist yet, but will exist after the current render cycle, we can totally 
do that. So do note that this doesn't happen automatically. You do have to add the defer attribute or the defer prop here, but this is just so that it, the teleport component remains backwards compatible. All right, the last feature that I want to look at and the last one that the blog post covers is on watcher cleanup. Let's say that we were watching some reactive ID and whenever that ID changed, we performed some kind of side effect like making a request to an API endpoint and then doing something whenever the request was, was complete, right? Well, what if this ID changed before the callback function um, of the, the completed fetch request was called? we would then be working with a stale ID inside of this callback. Well, with OnWatcher Cleanup, what we could do is we can say, hey, if this ID changes in the middle of this fetch request, then let's abort it because it's no longer relevant. Instead, let's, um, let's make the fetch request again with the new updated ID. There's this great new portion of the documentation called side effects cleanup that exists on the the watchers page and it explains this in more detail than we go over in this video so definitely check that out finally do note that there are more changes in 3.5 that aren't quite as exciting as the ones we've mentioned here but if you want to get a list of all of those changes check out the full change log here in github that's it for this video. I hope you all enjoy working with Vue 3.5.